good. So, great, great, great. Okay. Just uh, introduce yourself, where you're from, what you do, and the new single play. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I'm Chris Period, uh, here with Montreal Rap International. And I'm from Boston, rapper from Boston, who's now in Montreal for school, but also for rap. And I just released a new single called Pay. It's on SoundCloud. The link will be in the description and stuff. It's pretty dope. You should definitely check it out. And uh, today we're just going to be answering some questions, talking a little bit about past music, future music, plans, videos, all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, the new single, Pay. I got the cell on my head. I got some shit on my mind. Why is it catching me five questions? It's 30 minutes. It's fine. Wow. Yeah, so there's actually kind of a funny story behind Pay. So that was originally like recorded like almost two years ago. And uh, we just decided like we, we were going through files on our brother's computer where we uh, do a lot of the production and stuff. And uh, we just found this old file, popped it up. And it was, it was obviously my voice was very different since it was two years ago, but the lyrics were still kind of dope. And we realized this song should definitely be put out. So we re-recorded the lyrics, changed a few bars, and uh, Released it and here it is. And, and honestly, it's like it's just about it's just about like wanting to be famous. It's all about like claiming like fame, like faking it till you make it, kind of. And so in that in that uh, in that song, you'll hear a lot of like references to other rappers, uh, other inspirations, a bunch of stuff that I want to do at some point, a bunch of stuff I have done that makes me feel like I'm on the way to this kind of life. And uh, it, it's just at the end of the day, as the song is called, pay. It's kind of about that chase for the money because I mean, gotta make that money. But the the magic of wanting money, wanting fame, and everything is it also found in the previous album, yeah. Lost. I feel intoxicated every time I'm with you. I'm begging you to listen, but I'm guessing you too pissed to I'm trying to learn a lesson from the tension and the issue, but all I'm really learning is conserving roots and tissue. And I know. So, uh, Lost. I know a little bit about how you did it, inspiration, so creation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Lost is a little bit of a uh, patchwork uh, project. Um, made it in high school, and so I was still dealing with a lot of, um, honestly, just like immaturity and a bunch of superficial beliefs that I was kind of like dealing with in my head. So those songs actually have a lot to do with girls, um, as you uh, might expect. The first song on the album, Intro Ballad, is kind of the least one about girls. Kind of the one that has at least uh, involvement with romance in any way. It's, it's more just about me and uh, my homie on that track, I Dog Isaac. We're both from a very similar part of Boston. And uh, well, he's from he's from Dorchester, and uh, I'm from Arlington, where he goes to school. And so we were just kind of rapping about like us wanting to come up and like leave where we were and and go somewhere else and like make ourselves something. And so that song starts off with this like this. Oh, the beat was created by my homie Dan uh, D Squared. And he's really, really, really talented. He uh, he makes everything just like in his bedroom. And he actually was the first one that uh, put me into like a studio, put me into a booth, and put a microphone to my voice, and recorded something. And so I actually have a lot to thank him for. But um, back to Intro Ballad, he made this crazy, crazy piece. Like it was one of his best beats, if I if I if I could say that. Like no offense to him. But uh, he just had this crazy like nature song with like birds and insects and chirping, and it sounded like morning almost. And so I was like, yo, this, this just sounds like the beginning of something. Like this is kind of like a birth. And so I thought it would be kind of perfect to put it as like the intro to my first project, which is kind of like the birth of my career, kind of me saying to the world, at least people around me that are there, here, this is me showing I want to be a rapper. And so that first song def does definitely focus on like a lot of superficial beliefs of high school mixed in with wanting to do something bigger and not really understanding it yet. And so I didn't understand it making that song and like I didn't even really have this intent behind it, but it ended up being that kind of that kind of work and it worked out perfectly in the end. And uh, I dog I dog actually put a verse on there that uh, sorry sorry to slot one last thing. I dog put a verse on there that added a ton of a ton of like character to the project. And so I think that verse is like a huge part of like what that project represents, like wanting to come from somewhere that you're not so happy with for whatever reason, moving up, moving out to a different way, different life, lifestyle. Okay, yeah, really dope. So you really like put your foot down as a rapper with a loss. But before that, we did a, a few singles, uh, Get On My Level, Hotel, Chris, Chico, Madden. What about those? Yeah, yeah. So um, all, of, all those singles there uh, are kind of, well, well, actually, first of all, um, Madden is actually like the, or was slash is the rapper name of uh, my brother. 
And so it was just like the artist name put into the title slot of the SoundCloud thing. But it was like Windows Down. That was like the first song that is still out that uh, you'll hear my voice on. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I have to tell you the creative process of that was a lot of borrowing. Um, the song Panda was really big at the time. And I was listening to Panda and I was thinking about the way he was writing. And it was kind of the first time I started listening to rap with a rapper's ear. Um, not to sound like a prick, but I was just like hearing it, figuring out the different, figuring out the different, uh, someone just locked in and turned the fuck around. Uh, I figured, okay. figured. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dope. Yeah, shit, what well, was I talking about? Um, Windows Down, yeah, yeah, Windows Down. So uh, on, on Windows Down, I was just writing my verse for that. I wanted it to come out quick, because I wanted to show that I had ability as a rapper. There are a lot of rappers out there that make good songs and stuff like Gucci Gang or some Al Pump, don't get me wrong, but like, it doesn't exactly showcase Lil Pump's like, lyricism. So I wanted to come out with a song, uh, or at least a verse on my brother's song, that showed I could one rap, but also sounded good. And so I was listening to another song that portrayed that in a rapper designer, by, uh, Panda by designer, and I was like, he's clearly, clearly very gifted. And he shows it by having these crazy rhyme schemes and these cool references that only he really understands, but he kind of teaches to his listeners through like them having to look it up and stuff like that. And I kind of like got into that idea of it. And so I started writing quick bars, a lot of triplets, stanzas are kind of similar to like the Panda uh, idea. It wasn't exactly like ripping it at all, but I was just like definitely heavily inspired. And I'm not gonna lie, like I'm definitely gonna say that I was inspired. And um, then the, the references they put in there were just like about us, me and my brother, who, we've been tight like our whole life, we've been really close, um, just like riding around in a car with the windows down in the summer. And he's just trying to create that vibe uh, of like no care, no worries in the world, which was only really possible at that young age. And so like, I think it's actually really important that we put that out there. Well, we did, because now like, he's, he's, he's out there doing a lot of work with my brother, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of work in my own way. And, can't, you just can't really regain that youthful, no worries ever again. So I think it's like a dope thing to put in a song. And so it actually works out perfectly, like coincidentally, to be my first work. Nice, okay. Um, okay, I will sing one of the concerts. I know you played at the 504 Belmont, Concordia vs. Michael University. Yeah, that was, that was dope. Yeah, so um, we, we uh, my brother and I actually both performed at this rap battle between universities. Uh, obviously because I'm a student at Concordia University up here in Montreal. My brother's a student at McGill. And so uh, we got hit up by this uh, and it's like entertainment organization company, Live Roots Entertainment. Shout out uh, to them and shout out to the, the main source for organizing this thing. And uh, they put it together this dope rap battle. And the idea of it is it's kind of like this rivalry between Concordia and McGill, right? If you're not from Montreal, you don't get it. It's kind of this like rivalry between schools. It's not that hard. They put them together in one building Rapper on rapper, multiple different battles, and it was a wild night. They had a they had a beat battle, they had a track battle, they had all types of all types of rap battles, and everyone came out. And everyone did really well, and I was honestly really impressed by the talent there. Like everyone there, like can be going places if they if they do things right and they work hard. Like, they definitely got potential, and like like being there and like performing for everybody that like I had met months before. Like obviously new here in Montreal. Uh, we just we just walked in there. Me and my brother just like laid down our raps, and honestly, people went wild, and it was nuts. Like one one of my one of my uh, tracks in the rap battle was actually like a track, because it was like a partial trap battle, and uh, it was this track that is going to be coming out soon with a clip to it, about made by Six Days, and uh, it's called Grey Nuns, which is kind of representing shouting out our residents in Concordia, the Grey Nuns. And so that song you'll see, it's, uh, it's all about getting lit and shit, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. At the show, we played that, and all my friends that I just met this year, who also live in Grand Nuns, were going crazy, we're going wild, and showing all the support, showing all this love. And it was just a great, great feeling that I really didn't experience it as much in Boston, but like, it was awesome to experience it there. And the clip for Grey Nuns, one of, those, one of the songs that we did at the rap battle, my boy Sam here he runs a company called Six Days. <laughs> And he's putting together this wild, wild, wild clip. It's, a, it's a, by far the best music video that I've ever been a part of. Only have two, so this is the second and the bus and the bus. Definitely the best music video that I've ever been a part of. So this is the second and the bus and definitely the best. And uh, you got anything to say about it? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the whole point of the video is just to represent like 
what we do at Grenans. Fucking you saying it humbly, getting like every bitch up in the nunnery. And mainly so that we can like reminisce about it like in the, in the future and like watch all these clips and see us just getting crazy lit and partying up in the rides and stuff like that. My honey be up, shut your mouth, talk down. Say some, say some. Don't you act shocked now. We literally, we literally threw a party in one dorm room. Yeah. And film it. And you won't even be able to tell it's a dorm room. It looks like a club. Looks like a club. We so can... definitely check this out when we put it out. Like you'll 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 be notified. Yeah, we You're scavenged like, grain nuts yeah. looking for supplies for this party. Yeah, yeah, we we got lights from like everywhere. We it's really it's like dorm as fuck. It's like yeah. as dorm as it gets. There's nothing more dorm or more grain nuts than this video. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. It's lit. It's lit. Okay. Yeah. What about the singles? Oh um, yeah. Yeah, um, so we got some new singles coming out. I'll, I'll name drop a few. Uh, so we got one single coming out that doesn't have an official name yet. We're just gonna call it Church for now. And that shit slaps, like slaps. When we perform that, people are actually gonna be like breaking their knees and shit because they're gonna wanna jump more than like physics allows and shit like that. Whenever we show people, they always say that's their favorite song. Yeah, so, so this one is gonna, this one is definitely gonna make some waves. And then we got pretend that's on the way. Pretend has got a lot of uh, got a lot of thought behind it, and it's super, super like dedicated, I would say, um, to certain people, and that'll be evident at, at release. But for now, we got those. We got um, ozone. Ozone's un un unrecorded right now, but I'm gonna get in the studio and record that, and it's gonna be another absolute bang. So we got we got a few really, really potential heavy hitters. Grey Nuns is also on the way. It's not out yet. But you'll be seeing that soon. And, um, though and with, with Ozone, we also have our buddy Emilio, who's another rapper. True. And twins, twins, twins. twins. So we, got, uh, we got a group called Twins. It's me and my boy Emilio, another blonde hair white kid trying to rap. We always get shit on, always get told that we're not allowed to rap. So we're just we're getting on each other's backs, and we're heading in, and we're showing people that we fucking got the skill, we got the ability, we understand it, and we're, and we're here to stay. And so our first single, Ozone, we got another one, Legendary. It's also going to be coming out, and those are both with twins. So there's a lot of stuff right now that's behind the scenes, kind of. We're holding on to a lot. We're and we're just going to trickle, trickle, trickle it. And we're going fully international. Yeah, Paris, Paris. Uh, Sydney, we got a lot of connections. Boston, Atlanta. Montreal, Toronto, everywhere. California, shout out Truckee, shout out my childhood moments. Yeah. Well, we got about that big album for um, yeah, we don't have anything planned right now for an album. We kind of we kind of have a certain mindset uh, view, uh, At least I have a certain mindset uh, view in the game and it's that um, Right now people's attention spans are at an all-time low. We got social media at our fingertips You got the entire world of information right there So people don't really take the time to listen to an album and sit there and listen to a project and they don't honestly want to hear it out which makes sense because they have no reason to. So we're gonna be releasing singles until people realize when we put a real, real, real workout, it's gonna be something special. And these singles are just gonna be a taste. They're only gonna be a taste. And like, we're just trying to get people to be, be addicted to that and like want that flavor again. And when they want that, then we're gonna give it to them. We're gonna have an album for them. Because it's gonna come and it's gonna be ready and it's gonna be prepared. But right now, I can't really say anything because there's no developed thoughts about an album. Uh, we're at a different phase right now in our plan. But it'll, it'll be coming, and when it does, it'll be, it'll be big. The plan right now, like, we, we don't really have the funding and, like, the, and, like, a lot of experience behind it to really just jump into it head on. Right. So we're really trying to build it up right now. A right. lot of planning, and then come back next year for a second year of Concordia. We're living together in the Plateau mm -hmm. with like, two of our other buddies, and it's Sarah. just going to be, like, yeah, it's just going to be straight grinding. We're building a studio in the apartment, and, yeah. We're, we're, we're at the real beginning of this, of our, uh, of our journey right now. There's no, there's no, like, before they were here right now. This is, this is the before. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's, it's all, it's all being done. It's all in the works. But, like, the works will be revealed soon. And they will be dope. That's all I can say. <laughs> and, 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 in the most humble way possible, if it's possible to say something about yourself like that, like, just wait, just trust. If you could look back at yourself when you just started, what tips would you give yourself like, like going faster? 
Uh, I would have told myself to stop wasting my fucking time. Uh, in high school, I, I didn't realize that every single day I was just sitting there and not really doing anything. Um, I was, uh, I'm, I'm, I smoke weed, just to say it that way. I don't, there's no other real way to say it that sounded just stupid. Um, but in high school, I smoked too much weed. And uh, that is very possible. Don't do that. Uh, and I didn't do anything. I didn't chase any, like, my grades were all right because it's high school, so you kind of just finagle your way through it. But I didn't chase my passion. I didn't have any sports or, like, after school anything. I did music. I did band in high school. But other than that, like, I, I wish I had just told myself when I was starting, like, you need to get on your rap shit. If you want to do this, you have to do it. If you want to live that life, you have to put the work first. And I never thought about that, but I did have a lot of thoughts that were developing in high school and, and when I was beginning. And uh, those, those developing thoughts now have like a, have kind of developed into like full philosophies. And so it definitely helps that I had that time to just kind of sit and think and do nothing. But at the same time, I could have done that while doing shit. So if, if I could have told myself anything different, it would have been work. Because like, I remember looking back like three months into this year thinking like, oh, like, like I couldn't like, I could have like done something like at the beginning of this year. And I was like, yo, I was, I was planning on doing shit in college back in high school. So I'm always just going to be delaying it. Like what, what the fuck? No, like let's get on it now. And so that's when we started grinding. And like now, like we're saying, like the work is going to start becoming visible. Heavy. Yeah, motivation is like so key. I like, a lot of like the six days comes from like, I, I like have a genetic blood disorder, so like the sick part of it comes from like my personal experience with that. So there's been like times where like I legitimately thought like I could have fucking died. Yeah. So like there's a lot of time that people waste just like not doing anything, or saying they're gonna do something instead of actually doing it. And so that kind of just like, we realize that like, I'm happy that I realized it so young because now I can just put it in motion and yeah. can actually do it. We're fucking teenagers. Yeah. We have so much time ahead of us. I came here with a fake ID and couldn't get into <laughs> any clubs. I got it taken away. We got in though. <laughs> we got in though. And yeah. then we got kicked out. We finagled our way in, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now we're 18 and he's 19. Yeah. yeah. And we're still doing it. And, then, <laughs> and it's like the perfect time to be doing it. And honestly, if, if there's anyone younger that's watching this and, and is like somehow uh, like like looking for like words or anything like I would I would say the same thing I would say to myself just fucking start doing shit just start doing anything and try something even if you don't know what's gonna be your thing because you're what like whatever age you are even if you're older than me honestly like, I don't want to like be speaking to people because I know they have more experience and stuff but like if you're like 30 years old and you're thinking like oh I'm too old to like start anything that's like so dumb because I forget who it was but some some like mad rich this is gonna sound like so stupid because I don't remember any of the names or specifics. But someone really rich started off their company at like, oh dude, the KFC dude was like, was like 50 or like 60 when he like started selling fried chicken like door to door. And then he, he like made KFC. So clearly like, it, it, like always never view yourself, like just start working, just like do work. Yeah, it's never just too do shit. It's and so that's all we're doing now. And like, we understand that people are gonna look at it and be like, that's dumb. People are gonna look at it and be like, that's stupid. You shouldn't be doing that. But those people are the ones that have already convinced themselves they're not good enough to put anything out and don't wanna do anything. And so if you're, if you're feeling like you're becoming a little bit of like a hater, so to speak, and you're kind of viewing stuff with like a negative attitude, you might want to look it in, like inwards, and see what's, what's good with you, because chances are you can probably help yourself a lot more by like just doing shit yourself and, and stop shitting on other people doing their shit. And we dealt with those people in high school, so Been we don't doing, need to deal with them now. Been so there's no, like, as soon as Been you just like, shit as soon as you, give, you validate them and like give them the, the respect that they want, that's when like it, that starts to get to you. So you just have to block them out and just like not listen to anyone. Whatever you feel and whatever you like, you really believe, like then that's what you gotta do. Yeah. If the rust thing really like goes on like hard and like really explode, mm -hmm. are you gonna continue with the university studies mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. I'm like for real, like it's really yeah. good, like the rap business. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. So like. Uh, we're, my plan right now, um, obviously I'm in school for something that's completely unrelated to music, so it would be a completely different life. And like, I, I, in, 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 on, like, in full honesty, I came to school so I could meet people and I could have like a fan base, 
so to speak. I could have a built-in group of people, built-in community that I could release stuff to. And it worked out perfectly. And I met people that I, I'm going to go to the top with. And I, I, yeah, I think for, for sure, when this starts becoming more than it is right now, like, when, when, more or less when income starts coming in, because I'm never, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be the kid who raps on th their parents' money. Uh, when the income starts coming in from the music, then the music is gonna become my entire life. So yes, yes, to answer that question, definitely yes.